Good evening. We'd like to thank everybody for tuning in tonight to Life Sciences, How to Eat to Live, Nature's V Autoimmune Disease Foundation channel. Today we're here with biomedical research scientist and engineer, Mr. Victor Muhammad, and myself, uh, Erica Hyde. We wanted to discuss some of what you're hearing in the um, everyday news, but the topic matter is dealing with the relevancy of possible natural, uh, unnatural, uh, wait a minute, I'm messing up the title. Hold on, excuse me, y'all. The relevancy of possible natural and unnatural viral mutations. And we wanted to speak with Mr. Victor Muhammad because his history is dealing with viral muta mutations and he's been the most successful biomedical research scientist that we know of in dealing with them. How are you today, Mr. Muhammad? I'm well, by God's grace. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Thank you for asking and um, thank you for coming out today at this short notice. But in light of the uh, last uh, communication that we made with a video production and, and in light of the 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 world looking at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten booster shots for something as common as a flu. Um, we wanted to get your perspective on how can we go about understanding what's taking place. And not just that, some of the answers that are already available that you know of that would help us deal in the current environment, which obviously those who are supposed to be the experts are having difficulty in. Yes, sir. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. This subject has arisen from a battery and a cadre of discussions that have been taking place in the media and in the public domain regarding the so-called COVID-19 pandemic and the report of mutations or variations. In the last 6,400 years, we've been given three books of scripture from God. I don't think there are many people on the earth who doubt the efficacy of those three books, the Torah, the Injil, and the Quran. And throughout the last 6,000 years, there have been many people who pontificate and present these scriptures to people, and they are called imams, ministers, prophets, prophetesses, messengers, uh, a whole host of names. But the question becomes, how many of them can make scripture relevant to the people? Professing scripture to people doesn't give them bread. It doesn't give them soup. It doesn't give them a home and it doesn't give them happiness and peace of mind. It is the individual who is able to take scripture from the pages of those three books and then make them make that scripture relevant to a man, to a woman in 2021. This is the person to whom we should listen because otherwise we are just getting entertainment. And if we are honest, and in this day and time, you are encouraged to be honest, then you would have to admit that the vast majority of people who come before you, though they say many things that are truthful, what is the utility that you gain from what is said to you? If you can't take what's said to you and apply it in your life or in the lives of your families 
or in the lives of the community or your nation, then it is only entertainment. And the time has come to an end for entertainment. So the title that we have chosen today is Relevancy of uh, Dealing with Viruses which mutate naturally and unnaturally. Why is knowledge of viral mutation relevant to you? Why do you need to know? Why is it important? It's important because um, the Bible says that my people suffer for the lack of knowledge. And when you are being bombarded from morning, noon to night, in the middle of the night and early morning with sound bites, information, this new report on COVID-19, this new vaccine, this new booster, uh, this new pill that has just been uh, approved by FDA. All of these things bombard you 24 hours a day. And I would venture to say and ask the question, which is a rhetorical question, how many people actually understand what they're being uh, blasted with 23 hours, 56 minutes and 46 seconds of every day of their life regarding COVID-19 or any other uh, ailment? Hmm. Are you aware that there are only two countries in the world that are permitted to advertise medications, the United States being one, and there's one other. Two countries out of 271 countries recognized by the United Nation, only two advertised medications. And that should tell you something. So relevancy of uh, the knowledge of viral mutations whether that mutation be natural or unnatural. It's relevant because viral mutations is not something that's unusual. Everything mutates. You mutate. You may not realize it, but you do. If you uh, are, have been wearing shoes all your life, and then one day you make the decision that you want to stop wearing shoes and no socks. Well, the day that you remove your shoes and socks and start walking, the underside of your foot is very tender and soft. But after six months of this, uh, your foot becomes very rough. It develops callus and it, the tissue becomes very calcified. And, and tough, almost like the paw or a hoof of an animal. And this is a mutation. This is a mutation that takes place in your body. And the mutation takes place because you have to survive. And by making your foot hard and tough, it allows you to walk on surfaces like the soil, the ground, pavement, concrete, asphalt, and you, you don't damage your foot as much as you would if you had not, uh, had not uh, developed these, uh, this toughness in, in your skin. And so we uh, are coming before you tonight or today, and part of the reason is so that you won't be frightened to death and you won't be scared into doing something that is not necessary for you to do simply because you don't understand. Uh, the American people uh, have to understand and, and the world has to understand that um, when a virus is in your body, and I doubt if there is a living human that doesn't have a virus in his or her body right now. In fact, you probably have, or we probably have as many as five or 10 different types of viruses in our body at any given time. 
but there is a a level uh, in your body where so long as the viral number remains under this number, you are not considered to be, in scientific terms, is called toxic. But uh, in layman terms, you would say that you're sick. And toxic for a person who studies virology or sick for a person who doesn't, it's the same term, excuse me, it's the same meaning. So that means that something has happened to your immune system, whereby the immune system is not as effective in keeping the numbers of the viruses down. And this could be prolonged cold weather. Prolonged cold weather wears your body down because your body is now struggling to maintain a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. And because your body has to struggle and fight to maintain this temperature, it burns and consumes a lot of energy and that tires your body. And when your body becomes tired, the immune system just can't function in the manner that it should to keep bacteria numbers down or viral numbers down. The, the viruses, the bacteria, they're in your body anyway. And when your body becomes tired, then those bacteria or those viruses can begin to grow and multiply. And the multiplication of these uh, bacteria cells or virus cells gets to a point where the numbers are high enough where you become now sick or you have a dis-ease. Uh, and that level of toxicity uh, makes you sick. And so now, um, once your body begins to fight this virus, if it's a virus, uh, maybe like the human immunodeficiency virus, where it is tough and it is determined that it's going to survive, then to escape a particular medication, the virus changes its uh, changes its profile, it changes its uh, RNA, uh, it changes um, how a drug attacks the virus. So it puts up a barrier to prevent that drug from being able to get inside and kill it. Um, and this is what is called a mutation. It is necessary for you to understand what is a mutation, how natural is a mutation, so that you can now think, you can now make a, a rational decision, you can make an informed decision, and you are not as frightened, you're not as easily frightened uh, by having a, a fundamental understanding as you would be if you didn't have someone to explain the fundamentals to you so that when you do go to your primary care physician and they want to give you antibiotics for a viral infection, I'm telling you that antibiotics do not work on viral infections. So to if you are, if you are diagnosed with a common cold or flu or um, let's say coronavirus, the wild type, or any other viral infection, antibiotics don't work. So if, you're, if your primary care physician prescribes antibiotics for any of those, they're, they're wasting your time and they are possibly going to cause your body to become resistant to that antibiotic by over prescribing that antibiotic. And you're putting the antibiotic in your body and it doesn't serve any purpose because it cannot kill a virus. So now <laughs> in the event that you get a bacterial infection, a fungal infection or a protozoa infection, uh, which protozoa you do not want, if you get one of those infections and then a, an antibiotic is prescribed for you and it doesn't work, and one of the main reasons it won't work is because you took 
antibiotics too many times for no right. reason right. Your, and your body has now become resistant to the antibiotic just as the virus mutates to circumvent the effects of a, a, a medication or a drug or something that you give the, uh, your body to fight off the virus, the virus becomes intelligent, mutates, and now uh, whatever drug you were using is no longer effective. Mm. Well, likewise, your body will do the same thing. So wow. after compounding the body with antibiotics, and there is no particular reason for the antibiotic, then your body becomes resistant to the antibiotic. Then you are playing with your dog one day and Americans uh, love <laughs> to allow the dog to kiss them in the mouth and lick their face. <laughs> and when the dog right. licks your face, he leaves a flesh eating bacteria cell on your face and you began to see a small uh, lesion on your face, you go to bed the next morning and half your face is eaten off. You rush to the emergency room. The doctors start to prescribe a, a battery of antibiotics and they find that the flesh eating bacteria is not being arrested. And the reason it's not being arrested is because you took all those antibiotics for viral hmm. infections and now your body is resistant to the antibiotics and so now you succumb, more than likely you succumb to the flesh eating bacteria and you die. So these are some simple anecdotes, uh, Mr. Muhammad, to uh, the people, if they will listen to them. Um, it doesn't matter how much information we give to the public. If the public refuses to adhere to the information that they're given, then we, as you and I know, we will continue to receive phone calls from people suffering from ailments that could very easily have been avoided. Thank you for that, Mr. Muhammad. Um, as you were speaking, and you know, we look back at the, the topic that you gave us today, which is the relevancy of possible solutions to natural and unnatural viral mutations. The understanding that you have given us of uh, a general understanding of mutations, but in an environment, cold and flu, let's use that because you spoke on it many times with me and just that, you know, this year's flu, if you caught it this year, you, you spoke to how you would not catch the same flu next year. So for you to catch a flu next year, it would have to be a different variety or version or mutation of the flu. So can you speak to that so people can understand what it is they're hearing? You know, uh, 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 I don't remember the first coronavirus. We have the Del Delta now. We have the Omicron now. And, you know, based on what you've explained to me, it will just be like naming flus that change every year. Well, as we have uh, addressed in previous interviews. Yes, sir. I don't believe that if there is a COVID-19, it's not the wild type coronavirus. Right. What I intend by wild type coronavirus is it's not the coronavirus that scientists have been studying for the last 50 years. And it's been isolated, it's been characterized. We know coronavirus. Uh, we know what coronavirus can do. Uh, the typical wild type coronavirus, if you are infected with it, the most that you'll get are maybe some sniffles. And that's it. The flu is far worse than coronavirus, far worse. The flu, the traditional influenza virus, uh, as they call it, H1N1, has each year causes far more deaths than the wild type coronavirus. So now to be specific to your question, um, the only reason any person develops what is called the flu is because your immune system is not comparable. 
That's the only reason you will get the flu or cold. Uh, it is not natural to get sick. That's a misnomer. That's a misunderstanding that has been fostered by the West. It is not natural to get sick. It is unnatural. Um, if you or I contract the flu, the cold, or anything like that, it simply is an indicator that our immune system is not comparable. Uh, so if you contract or catch, and I hate to say that because you don't catch the flu or cold, but if your body becomes toxic and you become diseased and a culture is performed and it's found that it is the rhinovirus for the cold or the influenza virus for the flu, then it means that um, your body, if it doesn't kill you, it means that your body is able to fight it off. And once your body fights off that infection, your body develops immunity. It means that now your body remembers that flu, that cold. And so if it shows up again next year, then your body is already prepared for it. So the moment your body sees it, the T cells are activated. The T cells in your body, they sit. Sometimes they return to the thymus and they sit. And if there is an invasion by a flu uh, virus or a rhinovirus or a bacteria, then the, the T cells receive a signal and they come from a resting state to what is called activated. And when they are activated, they don't ask questions. They don't negotiate. And African-American males can learn something from your own T cells. See, when the T cells are activated and they are taken out of a resting state, when the T cells leave the thymus or wherever they are hidden, they hide. So when they come out, they don't come out to negotiate with the virus or the bacteria. They don't come out to uh, be diplomatic. They are not anti-shays. They are not, they are not uh, diplomats. Uh, they are strictly warriors. T cells are strictly warriors. So you don't awaken them if you are not ready to have something taken out you don't awaken T cells. So when the T cells come, they're looking for something to kill. And the thing that, that T cells mostly are seeking are viruses. So the same influenza strain that attacked your body last year and caused you to become diseased, it's not going to, it's not going to work this year because the T cells have already uh, got a profile of what that virus looks like. So when they come out, they've got a sheet, a profile, just like America does with black men. They've got a profile sheet on us and they've got a pro the T cells has a profile sheet on, uh, on the virus. When they come out, anything that looks like what they've got on this profile sheet, they kill it. Mm. And that's what a mutation is also. That's another form of a mutation. So I'm, what I'm sharing with you is that mutation, don't take it on with this boogeyman type uh, mm. persona. Yes, sir. That it's automatically bad. It's, it's like the, it's the same way the medical world uses the word cancer. You right. see, you're, you, you think that cancer is something that's omnibus and, and, you know, it's so frightening. And, but cancer simply means a growth, a tumor, uh, a, a cell that started growing and didn't get turned off, so it continued to grow. Now, there's more to it than that, but fundamentally, that's what cancer is. Right. So now let's deal with the, um, the root of why we're here today. 
and that is the relevancy of possible solutions to unnatural and natural viral mutations. Um, can you explain to us what it is you intend in this title? Well, the relevancy of understanding natural and unnatural viral mutations is to give you a fundamental understanding so that you don't frighten yourself to death. You can literally scare yourself to death. You can do it, it is proven. And so by giving you this understanding, it should lift a burden from your mind that uh, when you hear uh, somebody on nightly news stating that a virus mutated, then that's not necessarily something for you to uh, go and get your children together and, and start writing out a wheel. Um, what, what we have learned in the last 29 years is that um, we have developed products, supplements. They are not medications. They are dietary supplements, but they have proven in the last 29 years to be very effective against arresting viruses. And the good thing about the, the uh, amino acid supplements that we have is that it doesn't matter how much a virus may mutate. These, these products are, are effective from 82 to 97% effective in, in uh, uh, antiviral activity. So it doesn't matter. The, the central point to you is it doesn't matter whether or not the virus mutates. These particular supplements, uh, the Immunoboost 100, uh, have been shown for the last 29 years to be effective. In fact, in 2000, 2001, I was contacted by Dr. Abdul Aleem Mohammed. Uh, he had been contacted by Nassau County Hospital in Long Island, New York. They wanted him to do a presentation on the uh, supplement that that Life Sciences of Washington, my uh, nonprofit company, was uh, supplying the Abundant Life Clinic in Washington, D.C. And they wanted Dr. Muhammad to do a presentation to the infectious disease staff at Nassau, Nassau County Hospital. And Dr. Muhammad called me and asked if uh, I would come to his office. I went to his office. We discussed uh, the telephone call from the chief of staff at the hospital. And he asked if I would accompany him to do the presentation. And I told him, yes. I said, you speak on the clinical results that you've seen uh, since November 1994, you stick to that subject. You give, you describe the phenotypes of your patients, uh, their viral load when they came to the clinic, and their viral load after being on the uh, interferon product that we were supplying at the time. Uh, you explain and describe the decrease in the viral load. And their next question is going to be, how does it work? And I'll explain that. Okay, so we went to Union Station in Washington, DC. We got on the train, Amtrak. We went to uh, the uh, train station in New York. We got a hotel room that night. The next morning, we took a taxi to the hospital, Nass Nassau County Hospital. We did a presentation to, there were about uh, 30 infectious disease doctors in the room when we did the presentation. He presented the clinical data and uh, it blew 
the doctors out of their seats. And when he finished doing his presentation, the first question out of the audience was, well, how does it work? And that's when I did the presentation and I'm, I explained the molecular histochemistry, the molecular biology, the cell biology, and the immunology that detail how the product worked. Right. When we finished, they told us that they had 500 patients already registered with the acquired immune deficiency syndrome. They had AIDS and they said they could easily uh, register another 500 patients. So we're talking about 1000 patients. And at that time, uh, when we finished, they came to us and they said, all we need for you to do is tell us what we need to do to get this product, meaning the interferon product that we were providing the abundant life clinic with. And, uh, this was 2001 and we returned to Washington DC and uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad never followed up with the clinic, with the hospital. I don't know his reason. Uh, that is something that, that the public should inquire about because um, it's mysterious, <laughs> but here is a room of perhaps some of the best qualified infectious disease doctors maybe in the world. We did a presentation. His present, Dr. Muhammad's presentation was about 15 minutes. Mine was about five or 10 minutes because it doesn't take long to explain how, how the interferon works. Right. And after that, those people wanted the product. In 2002, I was asked to do a presentation in the home. I won't call the person's name, but this person was a four-star general in the United States Army. And he had heard about the product, about the, the product that Dr. Muhammad was using. So myself, my business partner, and two other people got in the car. We drove to this four-star general's home. We had dinner. After dinner, we, we did a presentation. I did the presentation on the science and my, my business partner did the presentation on uh, what we needed to, to build a manufacturing facility and to mass produce the product. Uh, when we finished, here is what the four-star general said. He said, I know what you say is the truth. I know your product works. He said, and I quote, but if I help you, it will mean my career. <laughs> so I don't know anymore. There are many other stories, uh, Mr. Muhammad, that I could give that uh, reference the efficacy of the product, of the supplements. But if those two instances that I just gave doesn't paint a clear picture, then I don't know anything else that I can tell you that would top that. There is one other reference, that, if you don't mind sharing, that is the one with the um, FDA. Um, are you referring to the one that I had in New York City, sitting at the, the desk one. of the investor? Yes, sir. Well. In 1995, after the Million Man March, uh, I was put in contact with some uh, millionaires or multimillionaires in New York City who had made their millions in the garment industry. And they wanted to, they did, they created a company uh, that was to distribute my product into 11 sub-Saharan African countries. They were discussing whether or not the product worked. They told me that scientists at uh, Laboratoire 
uh, Pasteur in Paris said that interferon doesn't work. And they were saying to me that, but Victor, this is Pasteur Institute. <laughs> and what they were saying was, you are just a Negro from America. Right. This is Pasteur Institute. They say that it doesn't work. And so they know more than you because you just a black guy from America. You're nobody. This is what they said to me, not in those language, but to say, but Victor, this is Pasteur Institute. So it doesn't matter that Demetrius X. Haskins and the sister in Baltimore, uh, Francis. Francine, mm -hmm. and some others had gone public, gone to the media. You had seen their uh, lab core results that said that, that their viral load was no longer detectable. And they were taking my product, the one that I was uh, providing the Abundant Life Clinic. <laughs> Excuse me. And so uh, while I was sitting at the desk of one of the investors, he called FDA while I was sitting there. And uh, here's what FDA was on, on speakerphone. And here's what they said, and I quote, when we are ready to allow a cure for HIV AIDS, it will be someone who has invested a lot more. It will not be Victor Muhammad. Though Victor Muhammad is the first person to ever cure any individuals of HIV in the history of the world with his immunological bio uh, logicals that he provided. So now yeah. it's 2018 and um, we come and we find out the other possibilities of dealing with natural and unnatural viruses with regards to autoimmune diseases and things of those natures. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why it deals with these? Obviously it's a mutation because, you know, like I've said before, I don't understand autoimmune disease. You know, how does your body attack your body? But can you explain some of the, um, and you've been over before, but just for those who are listening today, uh, some of the um, science behind why these people are now receiving great benefit in alleviation of the different types of autoimmune diseases that they've been suffering for years, and now they're walking around in their best health. I think I've said this on previous interviews. Yes, sir. I believe that, and this is just an educated guess. I don't have facts to back it. I believe that there has been either a natural attack or an orchestrated, premeditated attack on the body, the body's ability to naturally produce interferon alpha. There is no reasonable explanation for why people are contracting so many viral infections. There's no plausible explanation for mm. why people are contracting or developing autoimmune diseases. If the body were functionally producing interferon alpha in the concentration that the body normally and naturally would produce it, then it excuse me, then there is no reason it should be, the body should be becoming toxic and diseased with viral infections. And the, by, by tricking T cells to produce uh, these proteins in a, in, a, in a cell culture environment, and then returning these products to the body, then it 
allows the body to get an exogenous, meaning an outside source of something that it should be producing on its own. But if someone has tampered with your immune system, or if something is happening in the environment that is naturally causing the body not to produce these proteins, then the only plausible thing to do to keep the human healthy is to provide an exogenous source of these same proteins. And that's what we do. And that's what, that's what we did in 1994 uh, with Dr. Muhammad in Washington, DC. And the products that we have today are made in the same form as that product from 1994. So these this particular, uh, these particular amino acids that are in the IB100, IB19, 30, the OU7, uh, but primarily the IB100, it is an immune modulator. And you've heard us discuss that term uh, many times before. What an immune modulator does is sort of like the, uh, the CPU in a computer. Hmm. The CPU instructs all of the systems in the computer to do what they do. It controls the, uh, the operating system. It controls uh, all of your attachments, your peripherals, hmm. uh, everything. And that's what is similar to what um, uh, proteins like interferon alpha does. It controls and it causes other uh, proteins in the body. It causes other systems in the body to awaken, to get on point, to become activated. It, 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 it causes um, uh, proteins that are resting, proteins that are not being excreted. Pretty much everything, to give you an idea, almost every function in the body is done by a protein, almost every function. Wow. There's almost nothing that takes place in the body that's not a protein. The enzymes that digest your food are proteins. Uh, snake venom is a protein. It's an enzyme, but it's a protein. You call it a poison, but it's a protein. You see, uh, saliva contains proteins. The acid in your, I mean, not the acid, but the enzymes in your stomach, the enzymes in the intestine, uh, the, the, the hemoglobin, the, uh, all, everything, you name it, it's a protein. So the interferon has an effect on, on many of these proteins in the body. So in addition to killing viruses, it also modulates, meaning uh, manage, handle uh, these other proteins in the body. So it's a very powerful, it's a very powerful tool. That tool, um, have you discussed before, has been in the, from a um, recumbent point of view or pharmaceutical point of view, in the medical world since 19, in the, since the 1950s. Why do you believe that such a powerful tool is not been um, brought to the forefront, even though they talked about this same tool at the beginning of COVID as one of the most effective ways to deal with the COVID virus, yet we have heard no more about it. But now we're beginning to hear of quote unquote antivirals and things of that nature. <laughs> Why have that, do you believe, in your professional understanding, because you've worked in this environment and you've worked at the, the, the pinnacle of this biological environment that we live, and they know these things. Why do you think we haven't seen more use of it in the health, and uh, excuse me, in the medical field? Well, fundamentally, when the West was founded 6,400 years ago, one of the first things that was developed in the West was its system of uh, economics. And 
that system of economics has been personified and has been uh, finely tuned to where it is today. And in the last 100 years, people like the Rockefellers, the Vanderbilts, the DuPonts, uh, C.W. Post, Mr. Kellogg, Mr. Ford, uh, Westinghouse, um, all these people, they fine tune the latest exponent of this system of economics. It's called capitalism. In capitalism, uh, in order for you to make money when you are greedy, uh, you have to have a monopoly. A patent issued by the United States Patent and Trademark Office is a 20-year monopoly. In exchange for you telling the government how to make your invention, in exchange for you exposing to the government how to make your invention, the government gives you a 20 year monopoly on your invention, which means that no one else can make your invention for 20 years. Interferon is a naturally occurring protein. It has been found in every animal for which it has been tested. Every animal produces interferon. Wow. And any one of the conditions of patentability, there are five of them for something being patented. And one of those, uh, one of those conditions of patentability is that a thing cannot occur naturally in nature. Mm. If it occurs in nature, then you cannot patent it. So the, the attention has been taken away from interferon, naturally occurring interferon, because you cannot patent it. And it's not because it's not efficacious, it's because you can't patent it. And the capitalists who experimented with it 30 years ago realized you can't patent it. So they lost interest in it. It doesn't matter how many people's and lives could have been saved by using wow. it. Yes, sir. It doesn't matter. They're not interested in saving lives. As, in, as a matter of fact, the loss of life and sickness is big business. Mm -hmm. you got to understand that. You must understand that. You have to allow that to sink into your psyche. So the interest has been taken away from products and proteins like interferon, alpha, beta, and gamma, uh, and other cytokines and proteins, immune proteins, because you can't patent them. Never mind how powerful they are in curtailing and repairing human health. And that's that's the skinny, Mr. Mommy. So when we hear about, you know, interferon 2A, B, or things of that nature, and we look at how they're being used, but they're not um, as efficacious as a natural interferon, does that have anything to do with the mutative aspect of the viruses that they're dealing with? It is a possibility. However, at this point, I won't go that far. Okay. But it is a possibility. Uh, you can patent recombinant, a recombinant protein, meaning a genetically engineered protein. And why is it that you can patent a genetically engineered protein? Because it doesn't occur in nature. Right. Once you genetically engineer it, it's no longer a naturally occurring entity. So it can mm -hmm. be patented. And that's why recombinant is pushed and natural mm -hmm. isn't. Sounds like the coronavirus. <laughs> Or COVID-19 more specifically. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, COVID-19, yes, and not right. the coronavirus. Um, we've gone over our normal time. Is there anything that you would like to uh, speak to our audience about today in our, in our last few minutes that we have? The only thing that I would say to humanity, because our work and our mission 
goes far beyond the black community in America. Our mission is to humanity. Caucasian Americans are suffering uh, for the lack of knowledge, understanding. They're being manipulated just like African Americans, Asian Americans, Indian Americans, Hispanic Americans, uh, people in Kenya, in Tanzania, South Africa, Morocco, people in China, uh, Japan, people in Russia, uh, the Isles of the Pacific, uh, Central America, South America. Humanity is suffering because uh, they suffer because they don't know. And what I would say to the people whomsoever is listening is that you must begin to educate yourself. You must get books and read. You must not allow uh, people like Hollywood, people like the NBA, the NFL, the soccer leagues around the world. They keep you fascinated. They keep your eyes glued to the TV screens. They keep you in the cafes, drinking coffee in the northern part of Africa, in the so-called Middle East. You're, you're in there, you're reading the newspaper, and you're watching the soccer games. That's fine. But you must also educate yourself. And I don't mean going to college. I mean picking up a book and reading mm -hmm. a book on biochemistry. Because if you read the book yourself and stay away from college, you'll come away with a much greater education than if you spend a lot of money going to college. That's what I'd like to say. Thank you. Um, in closing, we hear much about the new antivirals that exist. Would you consider your products to have a classification of an antiviral? Oh, no doubt. It has a 29 year history proving such. Um, um, yeah, just go and get the reports from the early nineties. Yes, sir. And those reports can be found on natures-v.com. You can also obtain Mr. Victor Muhammad LSOW supplements, IB100. IB19, IB30, OU7, and IB10 at natures-v.com. You can send your questions for Mr. Victor Muhammad at the comment or contact us at natures-v.com. We'd like to thank Mr. Victor Muhammad for all of what he's offered to humanity in his work and what he's been blessed to create for us. We are humbled by what you have given us in light of what we're dealing with today. And I want to close with this, that we are taught that God does not create a problem, but that he does not create a human being to solve that problem. And obviously, uh, we have been given a gift through the mind of God, through Mr. Victor Muhammad, in the environment that we are currently living in, which is, quote unquote, been called the worst pandemic in the history of the world. So there are um, answers that you can use to help yourself make it through. And we offer them to you from Mr. Victor Muhammad at natures-v.com. We thank you, Mr. Victor Muhammad, for coming today and sharing with us. We will be coming before you a lot more often than we have been. Uh, Mr. Victor Muhammad has much more that he would like to share. I thank you for allowing me to be a part here at natures-v.com. And greetings, and everybody have a wonderful holiday and blessing with your families. Good evening. Good evening.